Well, ho, 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 everybody, and welcome to a new episode of the Rate the Record podcast, uh, the obvious Christmas edition, I guess. <laughs> uh, this is the last episode before, uh, like, for, oh, actually, it's the last episode for 2021, so this is coming up before Christmas, so why don't we just celebrate and decorate and whatnot, and I got stuff back there shrouded in darkness. Uh... I, I have a sweater that has a cheeky winking reindeer and it has a removable tail. So it's pinned the tail on the cheeky winking reindeer. Very fun at holiday Christmas parties. Oh, we can't have winking butthole on YouTube. They're going to kick uh. our ass off this whole thing. This, mm. I, I have a, I have Santa Claus stalking a small child on my shirt. So at least Much it's Christmas better. themed. And he does. That, that's the song taught us when we were kids. He sees you when you're sleeping and all that. So, I mean. There you go. But anyways, yes, this is uh, episode 17, the final episode of 2021 before we come back on January 10th, 2022. Uh, we got a little more content before that, but we'll get to that later. But your hosts for this Christmas-themed edition are Chris and... Savannah, who's tied up in lit Christmas lights right now. Yeah, audio listeners, you're really missing out right now. We're doing a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, visual stuff here, a lot of visual gags, and I think you just lost an earring. Yep. <laughs> Get little this is, bulbs. This is like any Christmas tree I have, shoddily put together and looks like shit. It falls apart before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just me in general. So, yeah, this is, uh, again, last episode before 2021. That's fine. And if you like what we do here and we like how we look on this Christmas-themed episode, make sure you mm -hmm. hit the like and subscribe button on YouTube. Leave your comments, of course. Building that musical community. We want you to be a part of it. Even if we're not here for two weeks, you're still going to be part of it when we come back. Oh, hell and yeah. Again, with the audio listeners, too, of course. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, rate, follow, anything that looks good and anything that can make us and you look good. Go ahead and do that for us. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, if you've been here before, you obviously know what to expect sans the Christmas stuff behind us, or <laughs> on us in some cases. Uh, but welcome back, glad to have you here, uh, especially for the last episode of the year. But if you're brand new here, what a time to join for the last episode. But guess what? There's 17 other episodes you can go binge right now. Wow. Anyways, welcome to the podcast, glad you're here, enjoy your stay. Uh, so if you don't know what we do, each week Savannah and I will choose an album completely at random, be it... Uh, Again, random, special occasion type thing, anniversary usually, or even a uh, fan-requested album, which we do have one coming up in the new year as well. I did. We, we choose one regardless, we talk about it at length, we rank the songs, and then we rate the record. And we don't have Jingle Bells to do that this time. I, I, I thought about it, but couldn't find I, any. I still hear the canned laughter, the cued laughter in my head. And then we rate the record. Yeah, yeah, woo! Well, if I knew that you actually listened to our own podcast, maybe I'd do it. But because you don't, I don't bother. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts everybody involved. Says the one who doesn't listen. I know. Well, I might watch this one just because I keep looking at myself. I'm, yeah, you look pretty all right. I'm looking pretty good today. All right. I, I am shining. <laughs> All right, so this week uh, I got to choose this album. Uh, Savannah chose last week. That was Big Wreck with Ghosts. Yes. You can go check out that episode as well. But after this one, because this week is all about Kindly Bent to Free Us by Cynic. Uh, I guarantee a band probably a lot of people haven't heard of, but <laughs> depending on how much you like metal or like heavy metal, you might know one of the, the origin bands of this one, which I'll get into in just a minute. But before, before we get to that, there's usually a disclaimer we like to read so we don't bully each other for our picks or what we are or aren't wearing on the show today. And we, of course, this kind of goes through everybody. So we have a little disclaimer we like to read, make sure that we're all on the same page, if you would. Savannah. The uh, short, for, or short version. Don't be a dick. Long version. <clears throat> the following thoughts and opinions we're going to discuss on Rate the Record regarding this album are strictly of our own personal interests. We are not professional music reviewers. We are simply two friends having fun, discussing, and listening to music. We encourage respectful discussion and friendly banter of each episode, but we do not... We do not condone and will not tolerate bullying or belligerence based on the opinions of ourselves or others. This podcast is a casual and for fun project, and you are welcome to take what we say regarding the albums we rate with a grain of salt. I looked up and that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> not expecting that. Oh, the batteries are dead. Damn it. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. He's, it turned on. Oh, yeah. Batteries are dead. He was supposed to say it's a line from the movie because it's... Oh, boo. If Just you don't know who Ralphie is, you're too young. 
And anybody not watching, he has uh, Ralphie from A Christmas Story, a little action figure. Yeah, again, the audio listeners, you're missing out on a lot in this episode. Charlie Brown's Christmas tree is also behind me as well. The, the tiny little twig tree with a bulb on it. Good stuff. Yeah. But anyways, we're not talking about Christmas specials today, although I mean, pretty sure we're watching a lot of those over the holidays. We're talking about Cynic and Kindly Bent to Free Us. Uh, I've been very excited to cover this album. Uh, I, I guess I didn't use Foresight too well in planning this episode during a Christmas special, because this is very much not a Christmas album. And there, I'm, uh, there's some... We joke around a lot in the show, but I'm going to be saying some very serious things about certain songs on this, so... Wearing the Santa hat, audio listeners, this is where you get off easy because you don't have to see the goofiness while I'm saying serious things. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I'd never heard of Cynic before, so I'm actually kind of glad that you picked something that I had no prior knowledge to. Well, I, I could have said this for Mr. Bungle too, but um, it was actually a friend of mine who got me into Cynic. Not even like that he's just like, oh, you have to listen to this. Like, we used to live in an apartment together a little while ago, um, and I just I would hear him listening to certain music from the living room on his computer, and then um, if he's listening right now, this isn't too much of a personal story. It's okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, and, like, I would hear it, and I'd be like, I like that song, but because of the chode I am, I don't go ahead and ask what the song is. Like, I spend way too long trying to figure out what it is on my own. Eventually, he was, I found out he was listening to the Carbon Based Anatomy EP by Cynic. I really liked it. And then I found yeah. this album, which was even better. Yeah. Nice. So, Cynic and Kindly Bent to Free Us. Cynic is a three piece progressive metal band out of Miami, Florida. They formed in 1987 with founding member Paul Masvidal. I think I'm saying Masvidal. I, I practiced his last name. On guitars <laughs> and lead vocals, and drummer Sean Reinhardt. Uh, on drums, what else? <laughs> Masvidal played with the band Death. Uh, they both, I think they both actually did. Yeah, they, I'm pretty sure they did. They played with the band Death on their 1991 album Human. Through the years, a handful of musicians have come and gone from the lineup of Cynic, notably bassist Tony Choi, who was replaced by Sean Malone just in time for the band's first official album Focus in 1993. Despite the addition of certain musicians on both in studio and live, just all around the board there. Uh, Masvidal, Reinhardt, and Malone are the only three to have been on each of the studio album until 2021, this year, obviously. Uh, Ascension codes due to the unfortunate passing of Reinhardt in January 2020 at age 48, but he did leave the band in 2015 anyway, so he would have been on it regardless. And Sean Malone, the bassist, also died in 2020 at age 50, so... Damn. Very tragic year for Cynic fans. Oh my god. But that today's album, Kindly Bent to Free Us, the band's third studio album, was released in February 2014. It was recorded at Perfect Sound Studios in Los Angeles and released through Seasons of Mist Records. Or I think it's just called Seasons of Mist. Uh, through interviews, each member has talked about how this album was the most the band has ever progressed through their sound. And with the death metal-esque elements uh, dropped from their music, some reviewers kind of took issue with it, but other outlets, such as Loudwire, Metal Suck and All Music gave the album 4 out of 5 stars, while Exclaim gave it 8 out of 10 stars. The only single to be released from this album was the title track Kindly Bent to Free Us, though I always assumed the song The Lion's Roar was at least one of them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of my points. Well, th that was one of the songs that, like, I, I, that was one of the first songs I saw from this album because, like, they released a lyric video for it. And it was, like, just kind of like a graphic-type video. Yeah. It was the first song I think anyone heard from the album, so I, I thought that was the lead single, and I'm pretty sure... I, I think it is. I think Wikipedia's just lying to me. Yeah. I couldn't find anything else, other information, though, so we had to go on that. All right, so yep. Savannah must be <laughs> feeling very hot in her lights. I'm feeling very hot in this Santa hat that I'm wearing, so I think yeah. we should go ahead and start this review now. So track number yes. one, True Hallucination Speak. Uh, there's a lot of uh, themes on, like, you know, uh, I don't even know what the, some of these words are, but just, like, beyond life, into the cosmos, new age, all that kind of stuff. Like, you're definitely going to get a lot of these themes going through these songs. Okay, <laughs> okay, I... I might have the right idea on one of the songs then. Because Probably that... all of them, to be honest, because <laughs> that's just Paul's way of writing. That's who he is. Yeah, there, there's one of them specifically that I'm just like, this is giving me spiritual awakening vibes, which is cool. Ooh, I like it. I, I got some things about that coming up. But tell us, <laughs> tell us your uh, ideas on True Hallucination Speak, because uh, I'm obviously very familiar with this <clears throat> album. I've heard it a lot. You haven't, so I'm curious. No. So, uh, truth be told, I have only listened to this album once. So there's probably some things that I have missed or will miss. But oh, yeah. uh, 
Um, my brain was trying so hard to just sync the vocals and the music until about two and a half minutes in. And then I was like, okay, I'm getting the vibe. But at the beginning, it just felt so awkward, but like in an interesting way, like yeah. I was just sort of, it wasn't annoying enough, maybe like, I hate this, but it was like, I want to see where they're going with this, which sometimes doesn't really happen to me. I'm just like, yeah, whatever, write it off. But this one I stuck stuck with. So that was cool. Um, and then one of one of my lines says, I like the part where they did the thing. So I'm I'm assuming I like the whole song. So the so, thing. Yeah, yeah. Just just the thing. It was it was great. It was great. Is it where Paul says snap, crackle, and pop? Did you immediately yell Kellogg's Rice Krispies? <laughs> um I I did not. Uh, there are a lot of the lyrics or vocals that I'm like, those are those. That's a human voice, but I have absolutely no idea what's being said. Paul's lyrics can get kind of confusing because, again, he has that kind of like very meditative style and just, just I don't know what it's called to like think beyond human type thing, like beyond our existence. There's like words and terms for it that I just don't know off the top of my head, but that's yeah. essentially what he is. I, can, I just say new age because that's like the closest thing that comes to mind i could yeah, be very yeah. wrong about that yeah uh but uh do you have anything else for before i have like a few notes on this as well um yeah i just got a couple more um i felt that the harmonizing vocal moves were a little louder than the main vocals and it just sort of i don't know whether it was just sort of reaching the capacity of my headphones but it was just pretty loud and the end of the uh end of the song made my ears hurt i think just a sustained high pitch noise i'm like oh my god but uh everything that came before that solid thumbs up not bad um but yeah i i was saying that like it is a very kind of like mysterious opening to the song it does sound like the beginning of like a trip and considering that even if you don't go by a lyrical context just having the title hallucination in the song yeah. kind of sets that theme for you and, like, I'm pretty sure this has got to be about a drug trip, because even in the chorus, uh, he says, like, you better get a friend to help you. So it sounds like you're about to take, like, mushrooms or LSD or something like that. Uh-oh. In the desert. Maybe. <laughs> oh, I mean, wherever the hell they recorded this album, I think, or if they're from Florida. Anyway, um, <laughs> I really, really love the uh, playful kind of riff style between the guitars and bass throughout the verse, because they just play with each other so well, so nice. Mm -hmm. um, just even tonally and even in, like, a composition point of view like it's just written very well like the chemistry is there between the instruments so i really like that um and this is kind of a note for practically the entire album too like paul's use of vocal harmonies uh especially in this track too it just it's it's fits so well and it's just it generally fits everywhere it pops up so i mean like he has a really nice voice and he has a really great harmony, which uh, like in like falsettos too, which yes. I make a, a note about later on the album too. Actually, probably a couple times to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I, something I really really enjoy is like listening to him sing his very soft spoken style, especially being in metal, and he's always just so soft with his voice. Yeah, like it's very uh, an interesting contrast. Um, I like how peaceful the ending is. Uh, just going from like the instrumentals that kind of go out with the song for a while and then kind of goes into that echoing kind of reverberated voice like sound I guess that's the high pitch part that you were talking about yeah whatever I, that was I, I do like it because again if it's going on the idea of like going on a trip I mean it kind of feels like you're still in that hallucinated state and that's kind of interesting uh, yeah. probably didn't have to go on so long but other than that I, I really like this song yeah it, uh, it felt like a good introduction to the album especially for ah my whole system is falling apart here. Um, anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, I uh, co totally lost it. You said it was a good introductory to the album. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially for someone who had never like listened to it before. So I didn't know what to expect with the band, with the album. But it uh, it kept me interested enough to continue on. Yeah, well... Thankfully, it's not such a long album. Even time-wise, not long. Like, no. each each song is, like, practically almost over under five minutes. Like, there's a couple of six-minute tracks, too. But yeah. you don't really feel that a lot in this album, especially with, like, the length of it. Yeah. it, it I don't know. Just I don't want to speak too much about the whole album only being on the first song. But yeah. I feel like it It all kind of did what it had to do with the time it was given. It, it didn't dick around too much. 
I, I absolutely agree, and that, that's definitely going to come up more than once. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, yes, yeah, track number two now, the one we all thought was a single, The Lion's Roar. <laughs> I literally wrote, how is this not a single? It's a fun and memorable opening uh, slash bridge to the track because, like, yeah, that opening is, like, also the bridge, too, and kind of the chorus and everything like that. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just I, weird that it wasn't. I got, this is probably a single because I like it. Because you like it. Yep. Well, I mean, like, we have 17 past shows of proof, so. Oh, yeah, and I've made comments on that exact (laughs) scenario before, too. Um, The verses set up some, like, really nice kind of ambient imagery in your mind because, like, you have, like, kind of the heavier, faster, like, opening to the the song, and then the verses kind of slow down, get really jazzy, very percussive as well. Uh, So, like, I don't know. There's no particular imagery that comes to mind, so that's why I wrote ambient. It could even be, like, color grades for all I know. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, the gentle percussion and bass-led verses kind of feel adventurous and welcoming. So, like, I thought that was really nice to kind of, like, start the song out with and everything like that. And, I, I mean, I, I guess I'll let you come in here because, like, I my next note's kind of come for later in the song. Yeah. Um, I like the double bass in the chorus. That, I don't know, it you could have existed without it. But adding it, it's just kind of like like a literal pep. Mm -hmm. And I like, I really like that. Um, I like the little open windows of sound where you can hear the bass. Because when you hear the bass in a song, you're like, I know it's there. But when you can kind of hear the individual sort of run on the strings or something, I'm always like, it's like, I don't know, it's like a little gift. And I, I really enjoy that. The mixing and engineering on this album are great because you'll notice in a lot of metal that the bass is just buried usually. Like you'll hear you'll hear it tonally, but you you don't really hear much else with it. Yeah, it's especially a shame if it's a really talented bass player. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, like whoever the the mixing and engineering on this one just they did a really good job of making it stand out on its own without being overwhelming. The bass tone isn't too heavy, so it's not like rumbling throughout and like killing the mix. Like everything is as it should be it's it sounds w- like what metal should be yeah i found the bass very clear so i think when i do get those little pockets of you know the bass peeking through it's it's pleasing it's not like oh god like why is this you know this string rattling against everything and it just yeah. sounds you know like a rattling glass cupboard but uh i guess my my last note well last couple notes for this one is uh i i always like those mini false endings where it's like they end and then they sort of pick up and then it ends. It's maybe a 30 second addition to the end of the song. Yeah. I always like those. Those are always fun. And uh, thus far, this is my favorite track. Ooh. I did listen to this one for a very long time. I still do, really. But I mean, like, yeah, when I first, because this was the first song I was introduced to for this album, obviously, on repeat, I loved it. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, the the end of the, I guess yeah I can go a little further now to the song uh, the end of the second course is super nice because it has that build up of the word roar like as I wake to the sound of the lion actually it's just lions roar but it like drags out for a long time but like the instrumentals are building behind him doing that yeah and then it kind of like leads you into this like very grand and satisfying bridge like at first it it, it, st- it starts kind of like soft enough in the bridge not soft but like not as heavy as you would think but it still has a really good flow to it it feels appropriate and then it gets a little more grand as it goes and then as he's singing in the middle there the very last words are like how I am born and it, when he hits born music cuts out immediately yeah. but then picks up for that ending I like but that. then it psychs you out again with another ending <laughs> It, there's like a okay, so technically I guess like a psych out triple ending. It's like watching Lord of the Rings all over again. Oh god. Um I I like how it doesn't none of them really feel complete, but sometimes that suspension feels good in a song. Yeah. And I think it works in this one. So yeah, like it makes you want to listen to the song again just because like it kind of leaves it unresolved. So you start the song over and it's like mentally you're preparing, okay, there'll be an end this time, but there isn't. But because the song's so good, you don't think about it. Yeah, I I agree with that. For sure. Good, because I thought I was rambling too much for a minute there. <laughs> oh, no. As I was talking, I was thinking to myself, like, how do I plan on wrapping this up? And as Savannah puts on in. her other earring. <laughs> I I found it. Um, <laughs> how, how to wrap it up is just false ending. You're like, okay, that's it. And then another point. And then another point. And another one. <laughs> just keep it coming. Now, if they kept doing it, I would have got tired of it. But I, it felt appropriate how it was. I liked it. 
Yeah, yeah. Like I said, favorite thus far out of the two I've listened to. All right, well, six more to go. <laughs> uh, song number three, the title track, Kindly Bent to Free Us. This intro, oh, so just speaking on the uh, the capacity of my headphones, uh, this intro is probably maxing out the, the capacity on these because I always have it cranked because I want to be able to hear, you know, little things that I might not normally. And uh, I had to turn this one down because I was like, okay, this is too much. So either it's my old woman ears or it's my headphones just going in my ear. So maybe because it's like a very soft, airy intro. Like it's <laughs> fucking headphones then. Because <laughs> all I hear is just it's like so, so loud in my head. Oh, my Lord. Well, I mean, it is like it's quiet, but like there is like, I guess, a high pitched bit of wind. It feels like wind kind of going yeah. through the headphones and everything like that. Because yeah. this is a very soft, like almost melancholic kind of start to the song. Uh, but it is kind of a good settling point because, I mean, like this album hasn't really been like super intense up to this point, like overwhelming or something like that. Yeah. But like this brief period of time between the lion's roar and like the verses of this track, which pick up, obviously, mm -hmm. like this was kind of like a nice soft reset point so you can continue on the rest of the album. So no, I, I really kind of appreciate like what they put into this song, especially in the intro and just like how they were going to structure it. Yeah. Because it can be very jarring depending on how you do like quiet into loud and vice versa. Yes. So like you have to think about what you're going to do. And I think they did it very well. And that comes up more than once in this album. I like the sounds of the drums I, I don't really know how to describe it other than it just sounds like the drums are going like from left to right and back again, where it's just like from the low floor toms up and then back down and up. Yeah. So it's like they're going up and down the scale. I, I enjoy that. That's that adds a total element of interest because it's like the guitar and the bass could sort of have a steady riff, but then the drums going up and down, it's like you're on a roller coaster. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the ver yeah, the verses kind of pick up, they feel really good and yeah, you just pick up on things like that that really add a lot more to what you're listening to. And, and it's this something is something so small. And this is definitely like the whole album really is something you have to listen to more than once. Like you start to appreciate things like that, but then you'll notice more and you're like, "Oh, this just everything's filling out so nicely." Yeah. And because I've had like many listens of this album, like I've picked up on most of it. It's probably still not all of it to be honest. But everything I hear, I like. Yeah. Um and again, going on that idea of like being jarring if you go from like quiet to loud or vice versa, like I, I feel like the chorus is being softer than the verses themselves actually works very well here. Although the choruses later in the song get a little louder and heavier. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one, this one feels good. It almost feels like a, like a different portion to an already set song. Yeah. Uh, like especially with the lyrical difference, because like each chorus has like different lyrics. So it almost doesn't even feel like a chorus at that point. Yeah. Maybe it's just a section. I don't know if this is like verse course related, but I don't know. Structure can be get a little weird sometimes. I uh I just have one one more note for mine. Um uh and I quote, I spent six minutes just enjoying the song. I can't even review it. I don't have anything else. <laughs> that was it. That you was don't have it. anything else to say about the middle portion, do you? I, I don't. I just sat there and was like, I I am into this. And I just like zoned out and then i had to go back and like listen to certain parts but i found that i was just sitting there just just listening to it and that's it i it's hard when i listen when you suggest fucking album that i like and then i'm just listening to it, i'm like how am i supposed to review this when i'm just i just want to enjoy it i just want to sit here and listen to it all right so, well i'll talk about the middle then because yeah yeah I'm, I might even read some of these like verbatim too, <laughs> like some of my notes here, because like as the middle bridge, uh, bridges approach with uh, this big buildup after the second course, it's it's fantastic. I, I really like kind of where it feels like it's going, but it's another one of those like cut off where it gets like pretty intense and then just kind of goes into something quieter, mm -hmm. but quite literally written. But oh my god, that jazzy solo in the middle. So let's talk about this for a minute, because I I definitely want to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Actually, in parentheses, talk about this fucking portion. <laughs> and yes, I will. So the song kind of breaks <laughs> down into a very calm, like buttery, jazzy portion. Very soft, feels really nice. Uh, so the guitar solo, uh, y if you listen, you can also hear Paul 
doing vocal with the solo. Like he's singing the solo as the guitar is playing it, mm -hmm. including the really high notes where he goes into his really high falsettos and it sounds so good. It's actually fucking mind blowing how well he can do. Yeah. And just, I don't know, it just, it feels so nice. And like the beautiful interplay between like the drums and the bass, just again, playing so well with each other. Like, the chemistry is there between the band and the and the instruments. Like everything about it just works. And like there's these like soft kind of keyboards you can kind of hear flowing through the background that add a lot to the atmosphere as well. So just this probably is my favorite guitar solo on the entire album and one of my favorite solos of all time. You don't have to do like shredding complex fucking double tap bullshit to get me, although there's plenty of great solos that do that. Yeah. But this song was amazing to listen to just for that reason alone like I already like the song but then that bumped it way the hell up I hope you're not wondering why I just sat there and enjoyed the song after that spiel I was hoping you would say something about it though yeah I just I was I was lost in it and I was like I just I'm gonna keep listening just listening to but it but if you go back and just like with he your headphones and like listen to him singing with the guitar like yeah. it, it adds so much more of an appreciation because it's kind of like it's it's like a musician writing a riff and like you're kind of humming it to yourself as you're playing because you want to know where it's going yeah. it's like he's doing that but in perfect timing with his fingers moving so it's just like I don't know it's it's a wonderful thing to listen to uh, Wait, my only does, does he sing and play guitar yes oh dang okay yes, he I is. thought he was just vocalist there's, a, there's only the three of them they occasionally have someone else on the album they occasionally have someone else live but it's only ever been a three piece for the most part dang okay okay um the only real criticism I have, maybe a little drawn out, uh, but I mean, overall, it's a really well-crafted track. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's about it. <laughs> so I, I, I see why it was a single. If it really was a single? Well, single as in, like, it probably wasn't played on the radio, but, like, this was yeah. the thing that sold the album, I guess. Okay. Makes the most sense. Yeah, yeah. Cool. But now I guess we'll move on because, like, I can gush about that middle forever. But I, th I tried <laughs> to keep it as structured as possible because, like, when I was, like, I, again, I've heard this album many times. And as a, I like to take walks and listen to the albums sometimes before I write reviews for them. And then I'll listen to them again. Mm -hmm. This one, like, I was listening to that solo and just, like, word soup came to my brain. And I couldn't, like, properly formulate what I wanted to say. And then I was afraid, like, maybe I'm going to say too much. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to keep it at that when we can move on. All right. I got a bunch for this one. So in the song number four, Infinite Shapes. What do you got? Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through everything, just get it all out there, up out front here. Um, the breezy ambiance that was too loud previously is like right good here. And I like how the guitar adds a quote, I'm lost in the desert in Arizona vibe. Like, this is the song that I, I imagine, you know, walking through the desert with your T-shirt on your head and you're just trying to find something. But the reason you went out there was to do a massive amount of drugs. Um, I enjoy the vocals in this one. It doesn't seem like too much. They seem they're more soft spoken. And I like that a lot. Like, like you said, he's a good singer and I really enjoyed that. Um, at three minutes and 15 seconds around there, the guitar is like a coyote howl. And I was like, yep, in the desert, definitely. <laughs> like, yeah, that I, muffled guitar solo. I yeah, heard about that too. Like, like I feel that. I, I feel like the spiritual awakening on peyote kind of <laughs> vibe. And uh, the ending bass is like a heartbeat. And my last note just says, me like. So <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's That's the feeling I got. And as the song went on, I was like, you're adding more elements that are just proving my thoughts right. And I liked that a lot. I'm not certain if this band was ever, like, doing drugs or anything like that. I think it's just one of those things where, he, like, Paul is just, like, that kind of new age type guy. And, like, he loves the concept of, like, out-of-body experiences and, like, yeah. beyond human, like, what's beyond this life type thing. So, like... And like he talks about like the cosmos and even in other songs on other albums, like, you know, not being from this world. So, I mean, like, I don't know if it has to do with drugs or just more or less like that is who he is as a person. Yeah. I, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, so if anyone actually 
knows, please let me know because uh, it be it may add more or less to how I feel about songs. I guess I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It, even if it was drugs, I I wouldn't hate it. Obviously, it, these yeah. songs are still amazing. Well, even if you just go out to the desert sands, drugs, uh, listen to listening to coyotes and staring at the North Star. I really hope that that's what he was going with or going <laughs> for because that's what I felt. Um, so f- what I have for this one is I, I the soft introduction is nice, but going to those like heavy loud guitar moments like just briefly later, and it's, it's it is pretty brief, I guess. Um, I I felt that part didn't blend too well, kind of uh, broke the immersion a little bit for me. Like it wasn't it doesn't sound bad, it's not terrible, but I mean like I feel like they could have approached that part more differently, yeah. especially as the verses are also very soft and quiet, very jazzy again. Mm-hmm. Um, the chorus is very memorable and catchy, like, whether you know the words or not, because, like, it's catchy in the sense that, like, the vocals are kind of done in this, like, s- these slow, chunky patterns, like, infinite shape. So, like, it's very easy to catch on to. Yeah. So, like, it, that's why I said, like, me- memorable, because it's, if it, the slower it is and the easier it is to, like, hum, it's an earworm at that point. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I, I shouldn't have to explain to anyone what an earworm is or why songs are catchy. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get grumpy at some points, um, but yeah. The next, uh, the only other note I have is actually about, yes, that weird muffled guitar solo that you said sound like a coyote. Yeah, um, I did say it actually adds like a very interesting layer and feeling to the song. It's kind of like the song itself is having an out of body experience. So like mm-hmm. again, going out doing peyote in the desert, whatever. If you want to equate it to that. Yeah. But like yeah, because it, it kind of feels like you know the song is what it is going into this point. But like it, it, this feels just different enough that like I don't know. It, it feels like the song's having like a third person perspective of their own its own existence type thing. I know it's hard to explain. I there are things I want to explain, but I can't because I don't know how to put it into words. Yeah. So that's like the best I have. The image is in your head, but the words just aren't there. Yeah, like you, you see it and you can even see it in good detail, but like you can't describe it. That is the entire time I, we have been doing this show for me. <laughs> yes. I'm like, you know, the the thing, the stuff, I don't know, sounds, words, I don't know. I'm starting to feel like an HP Lovecraft character where it's just like, <laughs> I saw something that drove me so mad I cannot say what it was it was horrible it was disgusting but i will not put it into words it's like <laughs> okay thank you for uh thank you for sharing that's funny all right so i guess we can move on oh yeah uh, so, i read you my whole paragraph yeah and i didn't have a whole lot for that one anyways like i like the song but yeah i just don't have a whole lot to say about it uh so number five moon heart sun head you just talk about earworms. Just pulling out <laughs> random uh, random words out of a dictionary or something like that. It's like, ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> the moon is your heart and the sun is your head. It is all a representation. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like this one sounds pretty. It sounds good. Uh, mm-hmm. But I feel like the sound and feeling of this song have already kind of been explored. Yeah. Like, yeah. so it kind of felt like an addition to like another song or two on the album. Mm-hmm. But I will say, aside from the guitar solo and Kindly Bent to Free Us, this is probably my, one of my favorite guitar solos on the album as well. Yeah. Um, this one feels like it explores a, like a lot more of the feeling like of the moment rather than like just being a solo in a song. And I mean, like there are even points when like the bass, or I guess even in this case, it's probably the Chapman stick that he's using because I know Sean Malone uses that on this oh, album as well. Yeah. Um, that even ha- has moments of shining through during the guitar solo too. Like it's playing its riff, but then there's like these little fills that come in that sound really nice. So it's like there's like a, a lot going on, but everything just kind of blends and works so well. Yeah, well, I definitely agree with the uh, exploring things that you know came previous to the song on the album. But the more that I listen, the more I'm seriously shocked that I've never either heard them or heard of them before. Because five songs in, I'm like, there's no way <laughs> that I shouldn't have, like, I, I should have gone this long without knowing this existed. So that was cool. This song did not feel like five minutes to me, maybe because it sort of rolled into things before it. I'm not sure. By the time I looked down to see when the song was going to end, it was like 30 seconds before. I'm like, oh, not too bad, you know? And, um... Usually I hate repetitive call and answers with vocals, but this did not 
feel annoying at all. It felt like it was necessary. Well, not only that, like it, it's probably because it wasn't as like loud or as forward as most call yeah. answers are. Like it was yeah. more like in the background silently, just kind of like behind the lyrics almost. Yeah. Like, cause and you're like talking that. about when he actually says moon heart, sun head in the chorus, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It was just quiet enough where it, like it's there being part of like this whole soundscape, but like it's not overtaking anything. So mm-hmm. it, it's good. It's fitting. Yeah, I I enjoyed that. So every time I have to eat my words, regardless on the uh, the situation, I hate it. So writing that down, mm, I just dug my pen into the paper. But I <laughs> I enjoyed it and I liked the song. Well, if you really want to eat your words, write them on a piece of paper, and then eat them live on webcam. I will clip it. That'll be the uh, clip for the episode. <laughs> um, if if I do that with this one, we lose all my notes for the next song. So I'm gonna pass for this Damn one. It. <laughs> Um, I will say, like, the the last minute and a half, I believe, the song, it, it feels very uh, meditative again. Yeah. And you, th- there's so many of those points in this album, but this was one of the bigger ones that stood out to me. And, I mean, like, depending on your mood, um, you'll either really dig how long it goes on for or you might be done with it. Yeah. Um, I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't hate the length. I, I enjoy kind of, like, letting this roll out, especially because, like, again, it's... It feels like a full body experience listening to things like this. Uh, but sometimes, especially because I know what's coming up on the album and like we're going to get into how much I like certain songs, um, I, I'm kind of anticipating something else at that point. But I don't know. Again, it's, it's a weird middle point where I don't want it to end, but I kind of want it to end. I don't know. Like Maybe yeah. it just depends on the day, as I said. Yeah, I, I can relate with you depending on the mood thing because sometimes you're just like, why are you droning on? Stop it. And then other times you're like, what? We're done? That's it? So this this one, by the time I got to, you know, about 30 seconds before it ended, I was like, okay, oh, okay, we only have 30 seconds left. Yeah. It's fine. So One of the songs coming up, yeah, I have a note similar to that, but the, the idea is, though, uh, it's something I very much enjoyed. We will get to that when we get there. But first, mm-hmm. song number six. I had to look up how to say this properly. Uh, <laughs> Gitanj- Gitanjali, uh, oh, okay. which I think he even says, you can quietly hear him say it in the song. But yeah, Gitanjali. Gitan- yeah, Gitanjali. I even wrote it out like phonetically. Um, I love the opening of this track. Uh, it, that bass or, again, maybe even Chapman stick uh, with the drums, then followed by like the soundscapes. The drums kick in again, obviously. Uh, and, like, the guitars are all a fantastic combination as they're slowly being added. Mm-hmm. Um, I This is one of those things where I, again, can't put it into words because I wrote verbatim. I honestly don't know how to put how I feel into words. This feels nearly dreamlike. Not a soft dream, but not a hectic dream either. But there's something dreamy about it. Yeah. But it's not the dreamy you would be expecting. So, I mean, like, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah. Again, I- one of the things I see in my head, there it is. No words. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, it rendered you speechless. So I mean, there's that. Which is fine by me because so far a lot of Selden has done that. <laughs> uh, I I have to to comment about the beginning and end of this song. Okay. Not enough songs start like where that fades in and they're already playing. There is something about that. Maybe it's because it's rare. I don't hear it often. I fucking love that when it's just, it just, that's it. It kind of like, um, kind of reminds me of like Boston's more than a feeling where it's the volume comes up as they're okay. playing the guitar. Right. I, I enjoyed it. And the ending, I like that. It just dead stop at the end of a phrase. It was, there was no bullshit, no fade out, no nothing. It just finished the phrase song ended. I enjoyed that. Can I just say then, write this on your paper because uh, the song Carbon Based Anatomy by Cynic from their yeah. one of their previous EPs literally does that where like it has this kind of intro where you kind of hear like this these these sounds, but like as it's fading in, the, the song is already playing. Like I love just, that. It, it's, the bass is fucking amazing in that song. Like yeah. I, I, I talk about Dead Goon all the time, but like I, it, it's not like a super complicated bass line. It's very fast, but like. Just listen to it. It's 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 incredible. I feel like it's a great precursor to this album. Yeah. So I mean, like the song "Carbon Based Anatomy." Just go listen to that. It's it's wonderful. Done. Um, okay, so uh, Gitanjali, uh, Gitanjali. I I I don't know how to say it properly. I really I don't. Keep I keep wanting to say Gitanjali. So you, whatever you say is better than mine. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I do like the like the slow chuggy style of the verses. <laughs> like this is probably like yeah, just the most like halftime feel song that they have. Um, so it's easy for like really any listener to catch on to. Like if you don't like their 
more complicated progressive stuff as they go through. This probably seems like the one for you. Yeah. Um, during the quieter middle portions, uh, the, the voices, uh, I mean, the voice kind of comes through quietly in the background as if it like over the phone, you hear that like behind, uh, the vocals as it's singing. Uh, Cause you, you have Paul singing the lyrics, but then you have like, it was in my, my left ear. You hear this, like, it sounds like it's over the phone, like this quiet voice saying something. It felt like it was coming from my subconscious. Ooh. So I'm wondering if that was like the idea behind it. Cause again, the themes that Paul writes with, like maybe that very well could have been a thing. Yeah. It, yeah, just have, it, like it felt like I was it was subconsciously happening while listening to the song. Just another kind of drift out moment. Um, and again, with Paul's falsettos, as I said before, they're very good. But like I think it's toward the end of the song when he actually says like uh, Jitanjali uh, keeps swimming. He says it, but you can also hear his falsetto behind it, and it's just again just so good. I don't know how he can do it, but boy, can he! I find with stuff like that, it's like or like sort of vocal styles like that I focus far less on the lyrics or sort of deciphering what he's saying or what they're saying and just sort of listening to the voice as like another instrument where it's just another you know layer of sound yeah well I I know exactly what that is because that's how I feel about um, earlier health records like the band health like before the singing became more of a thing in their music and their later albums, their earlier ones, like it was very reverb and his voice is super soft, but like the music's kind of crazy and chaotic. Mm -hmm. So it literally just felt like a keyboard because like you can barely hear him, but like you can hear the tone. So he's singing something and it matches the music, but yeah, it's just just one of the things that spreads smoothly across. Yeah. I like that. Um, and then, yeah, the, the song ends rather abruptly, like way more than I was expecting. I can tell you that, like, like especially that. the first time I listened to it. Yeah. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It does make sense, I guess. But like the su- it's like a sudden hard wake up from like the experience of the song itself. Yeah. So it it's kind of like, like you're, you're in a dream. You're just jerked awake. Or like someone just suddenly claps like really yeah. loud. And then just yeah. like, whoa, you just jolt too. But that's fine because you kind of need uh, your pairings going to the next song, anyways. Yep. Song number seven, Holy Fallout. And holy shit, this is where things get good. <laughs> At least three times I read it as Holy Filament because we did Mr. Bungle. Three God times! Bless Mike Patton. I had to keep, I had to keep looking Not at it Patton. going, okay, okay, that's what it says. <laughs> that's what it says. My lord. That's it. Stuck with me. It stuck with me forever. If you want to listen to what I thought of the album, go back. Go back. Uh, I was gonna. Oh shit! I just moved my camera. I think I don't know. But uh, I was gonna say that. Um, usually I would try to put a card in the top right corner and like I'd time it out properly. And I would like to write the time down right now, but the time's not gonna match when I'm editing since I'm cutting things. So yeah. Damn it! I gotta remember to put a card there now. Oh, um, so. I don't know how much you have to say about the song. I have practically a storybook of things to say about the song, so I'm going to let you go first. Okay. So, as I listen to the song, I will write notes. So, some sometimes notes farther in the song sort of contradict notes from the beginning that because the song will change, right? So, I put, doesn't give me end of the album vibes yet. Next line, LMAO, just kidding. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> um the vocals in that, like this are nice. I don't have tons of notes on this one, but uh, the vocals in this one are just audibly pleasing to me. And uh, <laughs> I said the ambient guitars are a signature, aren't they? Because just hearing like the, ooh, like the, the windy sort of filling in space. Like to the verses and stuff like that? I, I've noticed them um, like throughout songs previously so i'm not 100 percent sure if my memory is it might right be the ebo guitar song. that i actually have a note about too oh yeah yeah quite possibly but they're they definitely sound like it's a a signature of i'm not sure if it's of the band or if it's just sort of a theme over this album but they're 
pretty prominent and it's quite uh, quite easy to point out. Well, if I can say that Ebos are fantastic at creating atmosphere and music, like an infinite sustain on your guitar, very nice. I That's why I own one. It's great for creating just soundscapes, atmospheres, or if you just want to like hold a note forever and ever not have to pluck it again, boom, Ebos are perfect. <laughs> it literally sounds like you're going to be like, now go to www slash RTR. Okay, I, I think I've already mentioned this in an episode before. By the way, audio listeners, I'm showing my Ebo to the camera. I actually have one. This is so old that when I bought it, it came with a tape cassette on how to use it. A tape cassette. Not things where they've come with VHS. Tapes. So that's how long I've had that Ebo for God, like 16 years now. It's been Dang. and I think I've only changed the battery twice. So that just goes to show you how like good they are with battery power. Dang. That if they, if it's infinite sustain, that is probably what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well the, that happens because then you hear kind of bending a little bit as it kind of goes through. So yeah. it's like, kind of like little wavy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I hear a lot of it in the album. I kind of had enough of it by this song, though. I was like, that's, I, it's enough wind through my brain. No, I, I, I really liked it in this one. Actually, it was probably the better use of it. <laughs> well, I give you the floor. Okay, so I'm going to read every note as they're written because that's exactly how I, like, formatted this. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points I have for this one. So thank you for the spotlight. I feel the song starts by pulling no punches before getting into the smooth and flowing verse. The voices that start the track begin quiet and gradually get a little louder, as if being approached and confronted by someone or something. The brief instrumental bit prior to the verse almost feels like a moment of impact before resolving to an unsettling piece. Okay, so that's note number one. <laughs> and okay. it, it really, like, one theme I think... Uh, Personally, for me, I don't know if this is a theme of the song, but anxiety being a big theme in this one, just the way it's structured and written, I, I'm going to get into that more as I go. Did you feel anything like that when you listened to this? Um, I I think I was fairly distracted by the of the of the guitar. So um, by this time, I was fatigued by that sound, and I may have tuned out to a lot of things I should not have. Oh, no. All right, point number two. Why would this show be <laughs> if it wasn't completely polarizing opinions? I guess, but not on songs I feel so strongly for. Okay, fine. What would this show be if I wasn't being a dick? Uh, maybe the same show? I don't know, because then I'd be the dick. <laughs> um, so yes, the use of the Evo guitar, I'm pretty sure it's an Evo, it's gotta be, it sounds like a guitar string, I can produce that same sound on my guitar, so it has to be, I think my headphones about to pop out, thankfully it's not, okay, so yeah, Again, just reading this from the screen. The use of the Ebo throughout the track is an excellent choice. There's something so unsettling about it, but it complements the mood so well. The riffs are the riffs were done with so much care regarding flow, feeling, and mood and headspace. Mm -hmm. And like the verses alone just is where that kind of really comes into play. But the transition, point number three, the transition from verse to chorus works so well. The vocals never change to become more intense. It's just instead paired with more harmonious vocals, which is good as good as adding to it rather than just yelling or changing your pitch. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like the, the vocals don't change going to the chorus, just obviously the harmonies, but it just it feels right. It feels appropriate. Everything is good about it. Hi, Kitty. <laughs> I'm probably going to hear what? that thump on your table when I edit this. <laughs> what is an episode without the kitten climbing on me? And what did I say last week? Something about like make a compilation for every time your cat appears on camera? No, oh, yeah. Two, out, two hours. That's your movie. Anyways, All right. So continue on, please. Uh, point number four. Yeah, I'm still going with this. This this <laughs> this song is something else, man. Ooh, brace, brace for it. The chorus evokes feelings in me of a large, sad realization of something. It's immediately followed by a faster, frantic feeling. That's a lot of Fs. Portion of the chorus. It feels like anxiety, but like the softness of Paul's voice adds the opposite dynamic of just like this calm an almost reassuring feeling despite still not feeling entirely uplifting. Mm -hmm. It balances so well that I get chills every single time. Ooh. Intense. So yeah, when he gets to that uh, uh, no conflict, no mind tricks part, when it's the instruments pick up again, like that feels like more of the anxiety pick up for me, but his voice is just like, although it doesn't sound happy, there's something so soothing about it that it, it balances out perfectly where I'm not just like hyperventilating while listening to this song. Yeah, yeah. They need something to calm, so to kind of keep you balanced, right? 
Um, in the laugh and spit portion, uh, which is the qu- kind of a uh, quieter portion in the middle, building up to the actual guitar solo, I love the bass playing the same riff over and over again, but it does it in three descending octaves each time it's played, so it starts high, then goes to the middle octave, then it goes to the the lower octave. I'm going up on the guitar on my pantomime here. (laughs) Uh, It's the opposite way, just reverse the footage. (laughs) Regardless, it's a really nice touch. I kind of like that. I I don't think I really noticed that before until like listening to it tonight. Yeah. Which is fascinating because uh, if you look at my Spotify rap, this song is like way high up on my most played list. Oh, really? Um, I'm almost done here. Got two more points. <laughs> the anxious pace towards the end that eventually gives way to the very calm down last minute and 40 of this track is done so well. It feels like they truly found the perfect balancing act of emotion in this particular song. Uh, the ending feels like drifting on water. It's not a real sign of hope, but capturing the moment wonderfully. You are getting a lot of vivid imagery from us. I am because this hey. song means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, it's quite like, not, not even quite lyrically, but the idea is just like listening to it does so much to me emotionally. Um, and also, last point. This song always gets me right in the pit of my stomach. There you go. Everything is done so well. The last quarter portion of the song is feels so sad, but it's so beautiful. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this song since discovering it, but it has to be somewhere in the triple digits. I'm not even fucking kidding. Really? Not I've, sick of it at all? I've listened to this album for seven years. Uh, I mean, Holy Fallout wasn't like always like super repeated for me, but when I really started discovering this song is when it... like took over essentially yeah i'm pretty sure this is some sort of spoiler about how this is going to rank i don't care to be honest yeah well that that's okay because um i i guess spoiler for for the eagles episode uh that was the same with me the 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 way i talked about my number one it was quite evident (laughs) so well victim of love is the best song what what can you say i know right i know Go watch our episode. We just spoiled it, but go watch it anyways. There's a lot more to discover. Hell yeah. Card, me, card up in the corner now. Do it. <laughs> I'm going to have to stop referring to old episodes. I'm no, sorry. that's that's fine. <laughs> if anything, it gives more. We did this album. You might like oh, it. Go words. do it. Or go watch awesome. it. All right. So we're going to go on to the final song now because yeah. I've said an absolute like audiobooks worth of words for Holy Fallout, which surprise I have more words to say about Endlessly Bountiful. I want you to go first because this is where my Santa hat's going to make me look really goofy as I start talking about this song. I know you probably don't like it because it's Mm. repetitive and stuff. I don't want to say I don't like it. It just, it didn't provide me with that, I guess, image. It didn't really provide me with any image. Um, It didn't, I don't know. The... Acoustic guitar at the end was nice, but it couldn't convince me that I was satisfied with this being at the end of the album. It it felt I felt like I wanted to listen to one more song after. I was like, I it just it left me like the the end of the movie said the end with a question mark. I'm like, no, it has you, got, to be, you got all the way end. to the end of that this song and didn't think it felt like an end. I, I wanted to listen it to it. It strummed out on the perfect chord, just um, went out quietly. It was really nice. Maybe because it went out quietly that I just like, I've listened to so many albums where the the second to last song is sort of quiet. Then the last one is like the, okay, we're done. You know, everybody cheer for us. We love you. Yeah. But this one was kind of like a, I, I thank you for your time. Goodbye. And then just, they took a bow and they just left the stage quietly. Considering who they are and some of the lyrical content they get into, it feels fitting. Yeah. So, wait, is that all you have to say? Pretty much. (laughs) Okay, because I have one point, but it's a paragraph. Again, going to read this verbatim. (laughs) As you were. Uh, I, we joke around a lot on this show, but uh, this this is kind of where I'm going to get very, like, in-depth and, like, serious. All right. (sighs) This is a storybook ending. The emotional response I have to this almost un- is almost unmatched to any other song I've heard in my life. Almost. More on that in episode 18. Wink, there's your teaser right there. Because trust me, there's a song that gets me every single time. Uh, this song gives a true feeling of peace and resolution. Not just as a song. Not just as a song. As if it's, it's, uh, sorry, it's as if this album 
was a life. It feels like leaving the body and drifting towards whatever someone may perceive to be an afterlife. The heavens, sunlight, the cosmos, an Eden of sorts, etc. The lyrics may be repetitive in the first half of the song, because that's the only time there's lyrics, but it feels like a reward. The instrumentals were laid out with such care, getting slightly heavier as it progresses to a grand finale. The small jazz-like portion that happens afterwards feels like the final moment between drifting towards something and finally reaching it. This life is over, and so this story ends. Whatever happens next is something else entirely different and new. And I wrote this, uh, like, I debated whether or not I wanted to write this next part, but it's okay to show your emotions because I've choked up more than once listening to this track in the past, and I think it'll always hold a very special place with me so long as I can help it. This song is very beautiful to me. I feel like this might be uh, kind of obvious on which song's your number one. Maybe. Or at least close to. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. It, it took a while to find my number one uh, between literally two songs. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah. I wrote one for sure. But it's it's funny because when I first heard the song, I didn't exactly think that. But as I started like listening more and more, like... It literally feels like leaving the body. That was one of the first things I ever felt like when I heard this song. I was like, yeah, this feels like an ending. Like, it feels like you're leaving your body, going on to the next life, doing whatever you're doing, whatever happens type thing. And But then the more and more over the years I've listened to this song, the more of this imagery comes to my head and the more I feel about it. And yeah, not many like songs can make me feel emotional, but like this and literally one other song on episode 18, you're going to have to wait for that one, um, get me feeling really emotional and so yeah. this is this is one of them it's such a, a gorgeous song the jazz quiet jazzy ending and like that last strum that really pretty chord they all end on that's like the iris shut the body floats away the end i can say that i would not have gotten that after one soul listen Yes. Well, again, this is multiple listens yeah. over like seven years for me. I feel like as long as I get a sort of free pass on the, yeah, it is okay. And then you're like, I have a heartfelt thing. I'm like, <laughs> I, I hope it's known that I've listened to this song once. So No, it's I, okay. We're, we're, we're going to feel different on multiple yeah. tracks and over the years anyways. I mean, like, whatever. I get out of it what I get and you get what you get. Yeah. That's the best part about music. You, it's going to make you feel different things. Different songs will do different things. Uh, and, yeah. and here we are on like, something that impacted me very heavily. Just just don't spam me with tomatoes in the comments. Thank you. <laughs> just clan emojis will do. That's fine. <laughs> I'll take that. Whatever. Can't argue it. And so as this life and story ends, we reach the end of Kindly Bent to Free Us. What a poetic way for me to end this too, eh? Like, I mean... Hey, see, that felt like an ending. That... Just just saying that, I'm like, all right, I feel good about that. I feel good about how we did that. Well, because, like, the buildup for the first half of the song, as I said, feels like leaving the body, but then the jazzy portion's, like, away from the body to the point where it's, like, you're gone to whatever's next type thing. That's yeah. that's the best way I can break down, the fastest way I can break down how it makes me feel. I like that. I like that. Especially in, like, I feel like that couldn't be too far from maybe how Paul felt writing us or, like, the whole band did because... I know Paul kind of used death like that. Like, it's death is like the beginning type thing, mm -hmm. like one of those mindsets. So I feel like I can't be that far off. Yeah. Well, I can imagine. So I mean, with a title, Endlessly Bountiful, that kind of lends itself to Here that at last, idea. Endlessly Bountiful. Those are all the lyrics in the song just repeated many times. Yeah. I can see it. Well, that is Kindly Bent to Free Us. Uh, what a journey that was. <laughs> Uh, if you're listening this long, you must be liking what we're doing so far, so please go ahead, if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe, either or, or both is fantastic, obviously. Leave comments, what do you think about the album, and everything like that. Let us know how you'd rank songs and rate the album going forward, but do it now so that way you don't cheat and hear our scores first. Mm -hmm. Little cheater beaters, don't do it. And of course, the audio world, uh, like, subscribe, comment, follow, rate, all that stuff. And even on Spotify, like, there are viewer polls and, like, what's your favorite song type thing that we can add because of Anchor. Thank you, Anchor. But yeah, we can add, like, questions like, what do you think about the album? And a poll, what's your favorite song? Which I do for every single episode, so you can definitely uh, respond to that. Who's your favorite host? Just saying. Well, that's going to be a whole different poll I got to run. <laughs> I have to do. I don't. I don't know how you can go ahead and gerrymander uh, a, a, a two-person podcast, but I'm gonna have to find a way to get everything in my favor. <laughs> uh, 
I have an OnlyFans. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't. You're gonna get people like. I don't. Oh, oh. <laughs> just, I, I know. Yeah, they automatic subscribe. Oh crap! She was joking. Unsubscribe. That's why you should have waited. So that way, at least shows up in our analytics of how many subs we got. It's like if you stay subscribed for five episodes, she'll give you a hint on how to find it. Like that's how you rule. That's how you reel them in. <laughs> okay. Okay. Starting on episode twenty. We'll we'll see. We'll see. You should, Anyways, the thing is, you actually have to start one. You don't do, oh, don't have to post anything. Just start one, so that way they at least find it. So that way you didn't clickbait them. This joke is getting way too far out of hand right now. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I, said he, I said he didn't have to post anything. Too much. It's too much. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I want my rent paid, so I'm just saying. Picture I, pictures of my toenail clippings. My cat's it, butthole. <laughs> you get butthole pictures if you subscribe to Savannah's only <laughs> fans. She never said who's or what. She just said butthole pictures. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, give me the views. Anyways, anyways. All right. Back time to the to, topic at hand. It's time to rank songs from this album. Mm. See, I like how I can talk about all this beautiful song imagery and then talk about cat's buttholes like literally two minutes later. What a show we run here. <laughs> yep. But it does negate the things you said, so that helps. No, absolutely not. And I mean, after we're done here, I might even listen to it again, to be honest. <laughs> Hell yeah. And your, so, uh, and your night off right. Oh, yeah. Have to. So, above my head, boom, or above our heads. Graphics just changed. So that means it's time to actually get into ranking these songs. Um, kind of like I said for Bungle in the past, I don't hate any of these songs at all. But mm -hmm. once, obviously, there's going to have to be a bottom half of this list. Yes. So, uh... Let's see where that lands. Although, again, remember, don't hate any song. So, song number eight, Infinite Shapes. Endlessly Bountiful. I knew it. And I, 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 don't, I don't know. I think you might have just given yourself away there, too. Maybe. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Bountiful. Okay. I'm just kind of not happy. Song number seven, Moonheart Sunhead. Holy Fallout. You break my heart sometimes. Yeah, well, I may have given myself away completely, so what else? <laughs> Hashtag YOLO. Uh, I, uh, so uh, let's see if touch. I can. Let's see if I can do this again. Uh, number six, uh, Giten Jolly. Yeah, you Giten Jolly. That's, that's mine too, and I ain't trying. So. <laughs> Giten. Oh, that is your number six. That's my number six. Wow, we got one. When you said let's try this, I was like, oh, thank God, I don't have to say it. <laughs> Gitanjali, Gitanjali, or something like that. You Either sound or. Italian. Gitanjali. <laughs> Sorry to all the Italians listening. All right, number five, True Hallucination Speak. <laughs> yeah, that's fine too. Sweet. You know, oh, I, I know God. it's too late to say it now, but before we start recording, I, I said at least two in my head, but I didn't say it to you, so yeah. I guess it doesn't count towards any sort of uh, bragging rights. With only eight tracks, it was really difficult for me to even think we were going to get one. Um, you say I'm that starting. knowing damn well last week. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go see it now. But we matched really well last week oh, for yeah. eight songs. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> All right, so number four, the lion's roar. Number four, kindly bent to free us. Kindly, kindly get bent. Okay, my number three is kindly bent to free us. Moon, heart, sun, head. Oh, I thought you were going to do that like in Jetson style. Moon, heart, sun, head. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way, the way you were like structuring that, like the, the way you said it, I was like, oh, it sounds like Jetsons. <laughs> oh, damn it. That would have been so good. Okay. This, I, this is where I struggled for my number two. Number one, obviously they're quite obvious, but number two, endlessly bountiful. Yeah. No. Lion's Roar. And of course, number one, Holy Fallout. Infinite Shapes. Wow, that actually made your number one, eh? It did. Um, Lion's Roar and Infinite Shapes had the same uh, score, so I listened to both of them a second time, and uh, that's how it landed. Now, with as much uh, praise as I heaped onto Endlessly Bountiful and Fo Holy Fallout, I know we don't really have to explain or justify our scores. It's not like we did in like, episode one and two. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I just want to say, like, Obviously, like, it, it sounded like I poured my fucking heart out into Endlessly Bountiful, which I did. Um, the only reason why I scored Holy Fallout at number one and not number two instead was because there was there was more to take away from Holy Fallout as a, as a song as a whole, whereas, like, to me, Endlessly Bountiful is like an emotional experience. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which feels just as good as Holy Fallout does to me, but like there's just more to it. There's a word that I'm, that's very simple when I can't say it. It's not even on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. It's more bountiful. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, yeah there's, there's just there's more to Holy Fallout for me, so that's why it scored number one. Nice. But they both, yeah, they both scored a perfect 10 on my list. So, I mean, like, it was a little difficult. But yep. now, yep. <laughs> oh, oh God, your, yep, your yep is the usual transition. <laughs> After a moment of pause and yep. <laughs> So we're there now. I am awkward. <laughs> well, that's okay because this is the perfect time to transition over to the album rating screen. So uh, if you give us just like literally half a second, you'll be there. But for us, it's going to be like 10 minutes. Whoosh. Beep, bloop, bleep. Okay, here it is. For the last time in 2021, the album rating screen. Obviously, it's going to be back, you know, 2022. But... This is what this year will look like for us after we rate the record for Cynic's Kindly Bent to Free Us. Mm-hmm. I am so curious to know what you're going to think about this album. I mean, I've heard what you think about it, but I mean, score-wise, obviously. I'm so curious to know what you're going to think about it. What range do you think it's in? Because I just, I want to see where your head's at. Assume. Well, because, because you're so fucking hard to impress, you're probably somewhere in the B tier. Uh, I'm okay. going to go ahead and probably guess, like, B minus tier. But we okay. will say, uh, so like, I mean, what percentage would that be? Just, just to kind of uh, gauge. That's between seventy to seventy-three point three three percent. Okay. So what is it? You can actually go ahead and tell me right now, then. Yeah, you're dead on seventy-two and a half. God damn it! I knew it. I knew you we were gonna mess this up. <laughs> but the fact that it was in the seventies is surprising to me. I'm working on it. Okay. Well, now when we come back in the new year, you have to like S tier everything. Um. No. Well, then that leads to my album now, my or my album score. Obviously, I showered it with praise, and rightfully so. I gave this an 83.75. Nice. So, uh, again, without the scores in front of me, because I'm a big poopy head here, uh, the final score of this album came out to 78.125, which means it's got to be somewhere, I don't know, up here with Queens of the Stone Age, Big Wreck, maybe more than Pearl Jam, actually. I hope so. Honestly, I think it actually is. I love is. Pearl Jam, but I feel like Pearl Jam is like seventy-four percent. If you don't mind me checking, I am going to look. So, what was this one? Sorry again, seventy. Seventy-eight point one two. We'll just go oh, back because yeah. we don't take the uh, third digit or anything like that. But yeah, oh, yeah. Bl- that's the top top of the the thing. Um, Pearl Jam was seventy-four. Oh, I knew it. Okay, so I was right. Yeah. So it's going to be up here somewhere blocking the beat here. But yes, Cynic ranked very high. Mr. Bungle is still the king of the mountain, but Cynic is so damn close to catching up. Yeah, I I agree with that being in front of everything else, 100%. I mean, it's going to look good sitting there for a very long time. Oh, yeah. It's going to take a lot to beat it, too. Oh, yeah. Well, that was it. We closed out 2021 with uh, a B tier album, B plus tier. Uh, so I'm not going to complain about that. I think it's uh, in, in a good place. Could have been better, but it's whatever. Again, won't complain. Yep. I'm glad I introduced you to another album that you uh, enjoyed enough, oh, obviously. Oh, yeah. And it's the second, like, it's position two on the list. So, yeah, number I'd two all say, time so far. I'd have to say that uh, your picks are pretty fucking cool, and I'm going to have to amp it up in the new year. Yeah, don't just pick random albums for the sake of, I want to listen to this. Give me some, like, give me gold. <laughs> I, if I had gold, I don't know. I just, I, I like picking ones that I'm just curious, you know? Curious well, and that's fair. That adds more of a kind of, like, authenticity to the score rather than, like, having to fight a bias like I did today. Yeah, though, no, that's trust, trust me, as much praise as I heaped onto this album, I fought so hard to be... From, from being just completely biased. Oh my god, love the song, love the song, so good. I tried so hard, got so far, but in the end, it's a B-tier album. <laughs> I'm done, I'm leaving, we're done, that's it. <laughs> and Christmas can finally begin. <laughs> but you made it all the way to the end of the episode, the final episode of 2021, so thank you very much for t- watching this episode. Not only this one, but if you've been sticking around for the other ones, very much appreciated. Thank you for everything that you've done for us this year. And trust me, 2022 is just going to get wild, crazy, better, wetter, hotter, wet, hot American summer. I don't know. 
Just yeah, throw, sure. Throw in adjectives, throw in verbs, throw in anything. That's what the show will be besides crap. Maybe crap. I don't know. <laughs> bigger, bigger, louder, stronger, sexier. Once Savannah yeah. finally tells you what her OnlyFans is. <laughs> yep. Hey, I did I did say I was gonna start a feet OnlyFans, so I'll have one too. We're both gonna <laughs> go nuts with it. You can, y'all can look at my scar on my foot. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> you can look at my weird feet. Anyway. Anyways. This, this is the end of the show. It's a, the end of the show for the year. But again, we are coming back. Our Well, we do have two more things coming out. Uh, so next week, it's not a new episode, but it's the best of. So I'm going to be clipping that for a while and getting that out to you. So <laughs> if we've been funny at any points, it'll probably likely end up there, obviously. I and expect then the week- to see an entire episode of Just Me, but continue on, please. I'll make you the smallest window. Don't even make... I, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> I hate you so much. But also the week after, uh, we are going to be pre-recording uh, a bonus episode that it's going to air... Yeah, not the... the bleh, bleh, I can speak. The bonus episode will come out in two weeks. Best of is next week. So there is yes. still content through the holidays, but it's just all being pre-recorded soon. So we, you know, the two of us can just, you know... Take it easy and mm-hmm. listen to music freely families. again. And listen to music freely without having to critique it for a while. Oh my God. Sometimes it is a struggle. All I want to do is passively listen to something. So and I want to find some ma- good albums this, over the holidays. I, and I, and I want to make music again, but I've been so busy doing things like this. I haven't been able to. So guess what? Two weeks yeah. of me just like making music. Oh yeah. We'll review Frail State in 2022. Conflict <laughs> of interest. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm down. But anyways, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. Once again, I already said that, but I mean, I we do mean it. Thank you very much for joining us. So make sure you hit yes. like and subscribe. Either or, or both, obviously, is best. Comment. Let, let us know what you thought about the album. Let us know what you thought about the songs. What's your favorite, least favorite? I mean, where would you put Cynic on, like, the uh, tier list of things that we've done? Yeah. Very curious to know that. So, yeah. It's been a hell of a time, but you can also keep up with us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Well, TikTok not lately, but I mean, we'll try to do that, I guess. Yeah. Rate the Record Podcast. That's what you want to look for over there. So that, And also, the, you know, links in the description below or on our link tree. Wherever you are, you'll find it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that way you know what's going on while we're on our breaks. And, of course, Twitter, at Rate the Record. I'm still doing a lot of cool stuff over there, so go ahead and check that out. Awesome. Awesome. I have some, I have some TikTok ideas. I just have to... Wait for my props to arrive. Ooh, props. Prop comics. So this whole time you've been like slapstick and now you're actually going to have like real props to go with it. Yeah, well, I'm learning that I'm not funny on my own. So I need something else, you know, rubber chicken, uh, abnormally large mallet. Uh, just watermelon. Smash- I was just going to say smashing watermelon. Then Gallagher sues you. <laughs> And I'd be like, I don't know who you are. Okay, just smash a cantaloupe. He can't see you because it's a completely different melon. (laughs) I hate cantaloupe. Then smash it then. (laughs) You're moving on. (laughs) Yeah, got to keep our behind the scenes a secret. (laughs) So before we let you go, we usually like to give you like a teaser of what's happening in the next episode, which obviously uh, that'll be January 10th, 2022, episode 18. Um, I'll give you more hints over the next few weeks on social media. So another reason why you should keep caught up. Here's a, an extremely vague hint of what's coming January 10th, 2022. It's a band from the late 80s that started in the late 80s. Yeah. Oh, man. I think it's so obvious wow. who it is. I wow. mean, I've hinted at it in the past. I think people might already know. But regardless, yeah. if you don't, then uh, keep a look, look on our social medias. Maybe you'll get a little more information. But, of course, tune in January 10th when we come back triumphantly into the new year. Yeah. Same same bat time, bat channel, bat, bat cave. Yeah. Where did Batman come in on all this? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. All righty then. That, yeah. that, that's fine. That's fitting. Uh, we're just as confused now as we did when we first started the show. So that's a perfect way to yeah. end this the first season of the show. Yes. Yes. And thank you for sticking with us this entire time. Uh, just speaking from my point of view, I mean, I don't want to get too heartfelt or anything. Um, but when we started this podcast, uh, it started with me being like, we should start a Rush podcast. And uh, now we're here. Now it's December and we're still going. And I just want to thank everybody who does listen or you know maybe three years from now we're still doing this and we have somebody going back and listening to it again i thank you for sticking with us for so long and uh 
I, I really appreciate it. It gives me something fun to do and I, I really enjoy it. So yeah, thank it, you guys. Thank you guys a lot. This has been wild, and it's also, like, you know, really improved our on-screen and on-mic kind of uh, presentation and everything like that. So that's been oh, really yeah. nice. And I guess one last little tidbit before we go, then, if you since you made the joke about the Rush podcast, uh, we originally, our very first episode was going to be Farewell to the Kings by Rush. Remember when I asked you, like, do you want to do that first? Yep, yep. Uh, but then that obviously changed as we kind of, like, learned how to structure things a little more and what would be more relevant at the time, which Pearl Jam was turning 30. That's why we did episode one. But yes, Farewell to Kings by Rush was supposed to be our very first episode. But yeah, all we've done since, done it. And all we've done since is roll the bones. <laughs> There'll be more Rush in the new year. <laughs> and you're all welcome. <laughs> There'll be more Rush in the new year. Don't you worry about that. Hell yes. So in the meantime... Uh, go ahead, enjoy some really awesome music because you've got a bunch of weeks to do it. Go binge watch our old episodes. Have yeah. some happy holidays because we've got a lot of those on our hands no matter what you celebrate. Have a happy, safe holiday. And we will see you on the other side of the calendar. So take care, friends. Happy holidays. Love you. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy holidays, everyone. Oh, I haven't even come back yet. <laughs> no, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Happy holidays, everyone. And then just leave. Just walk out. I'll finish the show by myself. <laughs> yeah. But after rewrapping the lights, I wrapped it behind the back of the chair. So if I get up, I'm fucking eating shit on the floor. And then I just slowly back up and then I go. <laughs> this goes on for a while. Okay, I hear it. I hear it. Oh, my God. It sounds like I'm waiting or like I'm listening to wait music on a really shitty phone. It's just really shitty Charlie Brown music coming through a really shitty speaker. Well, it's not oh shitty God. music, but it's... I feel like I'm calling a Kmart. <laughs> you're, you're left on hold, and you're, it's been 15 minutes. You're kind of getting <laughs> yeah. sick and tired of holding the phone. You yeah. put it down for a minute, and then you hear... <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate that. Oh, my God.